Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ubuntu Touch Q&A. The UbiPorts Foundation show discussing the development of Ubuntu Touch and our community's questions. This is episode 42, streamed live on January 5th, 2019. Wow, it's been a long time since I've been able to say that. <laughs> Just over a month, in fact. My name is Dalton, and joining me this week are Marius. Hello. Florian. Hello. And Jan. Hello. And there's a celebratory clock, so we know we are on time. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello. All right, we've got that all posted. Let's get this thing running. It has been over a month since we talked to each other like this and to the entire community. Um, how have you guys been? I, I've been good. Uh, new year, new me, and new Unity 8. <laughs> you know, I didn't think you were going to bring that back, but you did. <laughs> what? What is that? So we have a packed show for everyone today. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to get to everything we have here. We're going to have to save some of it for our next one. But let's get right into it, shall we? So let's start off with some of the community news in the past month and a half. Uh, we started with OTA 6 coming out on December 7th, and OTA 7 scheduled for Tuesday, exactly a month later, I might add. So there have been a lot of under-the-hood changes in both of these releases, including us actually hitting our uh, goals of releasing every six to eight weeks. We've got LibHybris upgraded. And we're moving apps to GitLab. So we're getting all these things. Everything is rolling steadily at this point, which is something that we haven't had basically since the the project started. I, I think I will add a little bit on, on the LibHybris and why that's important. Why it maybe don't see any different, but why it's important is because we add Android 7 support and also um, we are upstream libharvest right now, which means that we can pull whatever changes we get from upstream, like newer versions that comes afterwards, um, which means that now we actually can have proper support for newer devices, um, and we already have new devices standing in line to get into community channels. So. And with all of this, we can put efforts toward porting again. I have been working again on this devil of a device. <laughs> This is the Moto G5 Plus, and I want to throw it out the window, but, you know, it isn't the Nexus 5X, at least. But that's not all that's happened. We've also got a lot of changes coming to Morph Browser, thanks to the wonderful Chris Climb. Uh, including, we've got Session Restore hooked up and working, which was not available in the original release. And there have just been a ton of fixes, small improvements to basically everything you could want in the browser. Um, multiple window support uh, and desktop mode have been fixed up. Uh, and it's really come into its own as a browser. Um, I am happy to be using it at this point. And it's also now, now we can watch a YouTube video without the, the screen dying on you, which is pretty nice. Yeah, that too. Locking, locking. But I think the biggest user-facing feature that people are going to notice in OTA 7 is keyboard theming. Oh my, there we go. I have a different theme. So, Kuki, or Java Cookies, has been working on this for a very long time, and he finally proposed it for this release. Keyboard theming allows you to change between a uh, preset nine different themes in the keyboard. Uh, that range from the default white, just white, just black, as I just showed, um, as well as a few Siru themes and bordered themes. And all of them look really nice, especially if you are using a different theme on Ubuntu Touch itself. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I really appreciate this because I have always used a dark keyboard. So it's been a great... This has been and, awesome. And it's also pretty nice because... Um... The theming is written in um, in JSON files. So this makes an uh, opportunity to expand on this further and makes a lot of different themes also. Mm -hmm. There are, there's a lot coming in there. We also have a new keyboard. Was it Lithuanian, uh, Florian? Yep. Yeah. 
and affixed to the French Swiss keyboard so it loads correctly now as well. Mm -hmm. But the full list of changes is available on our blog at ubports.com slash blog in the OTA7 call for testing post and soon in the OTA7 release post, which will be coming on Tuesday along with the release. So Everybody this is hype. hyped. Every yes. I am hyped. Woo. Woo. <laughs> Give some emotional reaction, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we always hype. Applaud. But we developers, we have we have had this OTA for so long now that we are already starting on the new ones. Like we, I'm using mine as a daily driver, so. Yeah, on so de Devil. On Devil, I mean, yeah. I put mine on RC. I'm not quite that uh, trusting. I should put mine on Devil, actually. I should well, do it, that. It's fine. I always update when I'm home. So when I'm home, I, I don't need a functional phone, really, so. Being being on devil is fine until one day we upgrade Cute Pim and the, uh, the alarm <laughs> clock just stops working. I don't need to wake up in the morning either. So. <laughs> Oops. Well, yeah, that that's the thing. Um, if you are not a developer, don't use that as a daily driver. I'm just living on the edge. That's on good advice. Yeah. <laughs> devil mode. That's. I'm just thinking everybody pronounces it more like devil instead of devil. So, yeah, maybe it's a devil channel sometimes. It's evil. It's evil, yeah. It bites back. You have to really, really be careful with it. No, don't make our guys afraid of the devil channel. <laughs> <laughs> One time I uh, did make a reference to I'd rather the devil I know than the devil I don't. And I didn't realize how clever I was being for a few minutes. <laughs> Oh, good. Uh, let's other continue, huh? Let's do it. We will be at FOSDEM as attendees. <laughs> Woo! So, uh, Marius, I believe you're booked. I still need to book everything, but I'm almost there. Um, Jan and Florian, what are you? I can't come, unfortunately. <clears throat> I put you on the spot for that. <laughs> I, I didn't book my flights because I'm just waiting to get the more expensive. No, that's a joke. Um, I try to make it. It's not 100% sure, but it's uh, very probable. And also what I want to do at Fostem, why I really want to go there, is not only to meet a lot of people that are interested in Ubuntu Touch, but also to meet the people of Network Manager. And I didn't ah. write this now in the show notes, but as a side note, we want to team up with the guys who uh, make the network manager uh, for for Linux and in general, yeah, not only, of course, for the phone or for Ubuntu. And if we can uh, establish a good relationship with network manager guys, we might be able to have a lot more updates coming our way to improve the networking, the switching between Wi-Fi and radio and so on and so on. So I found a, a communication channel with them. There will be at Fostem also, and I want to meet them there. Um, maybe to give them um, a phone for uh, as a like like a small present, so they can really play with that, and uh, they will probably help us to upstream what we need in the network manager. One of the things that goes together with the Morph browser actually is the detection if you are behind a captive portal. This is something that really bugs me now because I'm working in a new company and I can only use the guest Wi-Fi. So every time I have to go there, I have to open up the browser then enter some web page, which is not HTTPS because Captive Portal will only react on HTTP. So I'm already inventing completely non-existing domains to get into the Captive Portal. Everything else will not work with HTTPS. It's really, really bad. And we need to prioritize this for people who are roaming a lot with public Wi-Fi. I can really see this. So this is my personal project for the, let's say, first half of the year 2019 will be Captive Portal support just because I need it really badly. <laughs> you, you mean like um, like the hotspot login pages? Yes, yes you will have a yep. notification popping up. So the network manager ah, will detect okay. that you are connected with a network, but you're not connected to the internet. And then there will be a small notification on top from the normal postal, local postal uh, client. And will tell you, OK, you're behind the captive portal. Do you want to uh, enter the homepage of it? Please click here and then hopefully mm. It will open up the browser and you can uh, log in or do whatever you need. Yeah. Um, that would be a great feature because every other phone has it, every other commercial phone, let's say, and it's really necessary nowadays. Yeah. 
So yeah. we're targeting, or I'm targeting this for my private uh, testing for the first half of this year. Hopefully, it will work. Yeah, um, yeah. that's awesome for me. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm excited I, to meet Marius for the first time. Woo! Ever, and also Florian for that matter. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, but but we'll also be able to see the people making the uh, Pine sixty four gear, and Purism should be there. So yeah. it's going to be a big event. It's going to be really exciting to to actually come in in a in a, an environment where it is just Linux people. Like we have been at Ubicon. And the beasties. Well, well, mostly Linux people. That is. Um, but we have been been like my for example i only been at ubicon for the most part um and that's that's only uh ubuntu people and you know everyone pretty much already um so that's that's a cool thing with going to to a, such a big event to see new new linux people see new angles see new ideas and and, and new wayland protocols well you uh, know there's a really easy way to uh meet different people just come to the us <laughs> It's great. We've got Linux conferences over here. But you don't pay your staff or Ooh. government. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> well, you got me on that one. Yeah, it's a hot topic now. Um, yeah, let's not get into politics. <laughs> well, we'll uh, certainly be coordinating our efforts on Telegram and maybe on a new Telegram app. Ooh. Yes, so that's uh, one of the big things where 2018 ended and uh, we were finally able to get the new Telegram uh, app rolling. Uh, we did not really uh, make make it with the end of year deadline for the beta version because now it's more like an alpha version, I would say, but it's already pretty stable. Um, and um, you can use it for basic messaging already. Yeah, it's it not that really bad. nice. We just have problems that we don't have group management, the context management, and this stuff. And unfortunately, forwarding and reply is not finished now, but we're working on this. So the new Telegram app has now a new name also, because we had to change, or we wanted to change the name. It will be called Teleports. Teleports, we've capitalized uh, T-E-L-E, -E, which is a little bit of a punt for Ubiports. And um, yeah, uh, there was a lot of tremendous uh, effort by a German developer group. There was a hackathon in Vienna. You might remember where we talked about this some, some weeks ago, or actually months ago already. There will be now a second hackathon where uh, we again focus on uh, teleports uh, development. It will be in, in Stuttgart in Germany, uh, January 26th. There is a get together link for it. And I think it's also mentioned somewhere in our blog or on the homepage. So, if anybody else is interested and can come to Stuttgart for hacking on Telegram uh, app, would be very nice. And um, yeah, it, last time it was really, really uh, welcoming and uh, great event. So by Will that time, going, um, pardon? Will you be going? I'm not pretty sure. Uh, probably not, but I will be available online. So I will join by remote with my camera face. Okay. You have to put some camera and screen for me. Um, so the overall thing is also that uh, with the second uh, hackathon, we might get into a state that is really releasable for a, for a beta version. And uh, then I hope that everybody can enjoy um, the much more stable version, no network issues anymore. Um, you don't need to close it. it. You can send offline messages already. Secret chats are working finally. A lot of great things yeah? and everything out of the box. So we didn't really have to do so much just to understand how to program this TDLib, which was done by Telegram. But one there, thing I have to yeah. say, uh, immediately improvements with it, it's so much faster, like oh, moving yeah. around in it yeah. and it's so much smoother. Yeah, that's that's also because um, it's really preloading things in the background. It's the, the library itself is multi-threaded. So the network access, as long as it has network access, will always try to synchronize what it needs. And uh, just the QML part is, is the, the normal thing with sliding up and down in the chats. But that's now much faster because we reduce the amount of QML code by I don't know how many percent, by a ton of percent. Yeah? So because you could create it from scratch, uh, we could really clean it up. Yeah? And, but what um, I, yeah. 
I also wonder if it's faster because it's using Q, it using Qt quick controls or not. Um, currently, it's it's mixed still because problem is that oh. in Qt quick we don't have all the features that we need um, for the from the Ubuntu toolkit that we have UI toolkit. toolkit. You know, this is uh, the things that uh, for the keyboard, for example, that the keyboard moves in up and the app window reduced itself. That was not really working with Qt quick and a few other things. Yeah? So ah, okay. they are not even inside. I would say when we would have a new UI toolkit that is based on uh, Qt Quick, for example, we could gain another few percent here. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, but currently, it's already very promising, and I also try to use it uh, daily. We have still a little bit of lack on support on on multimedia components like pictures, gifs, uh, audio, and so. But uh, this will come gradually now. So it will move also into GitLab. Oh, actually, it's, it's already in GitLab, but it's in my private account and in the account of Dan Chapman. So thanks, Dan, for the tremendous kickoff of this app also. Um, and um, But we will move it under the UbiPorts uh, organization or account in GitLab. And then we will have also new translations and stuff. So there's a lot of things coming up. So I think that's enough for Telegram for the moment. It's great. <laughs> It is nice. I've been using it in tag team with the old app because it's so much faster. Mm. True. So much faster. <laughs> well, okay. we have a special episode for everyone. Oh, wait, no. One more thing for, for Jan. Circling back to conferences, uh, yeah. last week I was at 35C3, which is the Chaos Communication Congress, the uh, yearly meetup uh, of the German hacker group uh, Chaos Computer Club. Um, I had a great time, it was a really an amazing event. I think it had uh, 15,000 attendees. Uh, so just a lot of uh, hackers, lots of Linux people everywhere. I, I had a great time uh, talking to people about Ubuntu Touch and uh, I was surprised how many, how many people reacted really uh, uh, open and were excited about it. and. Uh, I flashed a couple of phones as well, and I uh, I gave a short lightning talk, uh, which you can check out uh, on, uh, which will be linked in the in the blog. Um, and I hope it's we to live chat. <laughs> okay, and I hope we will have. Um, uh, but don't don't go watch it now. Watch watch the stream now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I hope we will have a. Um, a bigger presence uh, from UbiPods officially there next year because it was really amazing. Just people uh, uh, hacking stuff everywhere and uh, just developing uh, stuff. It was really amazing. Uh, good times. Uh, Nerd Zoom Media says something about using your Ubuntu phone as a SIP phone. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they they do weird things at this conference. So uh, they have uh, they have a decked. Uh, telephone nets all over the the conference site where people can just uh, bring their decked uh, uh, handheld phones from their from their homes and just dial in. But if you don't have a decked phone, you can just use uh, um, a SIP. You can just dial in with SIP. And I actually tried the Linphone app for Ubuntu Touch, and it worked great. Uh, it's uh, so that you can just uh, use SIP in the Wi-Fi on the on the site and uh, use that to call people. Uh, and that worked as well. So I was really, uh, so really um, pleased with the work that the Linphone team did there. Oh, is that to dial into conferences or dial into talks because they're too crowded? Or uh, no, it's just to talk to other people. Oh, <laughs> oh. okay. <laughs> um, both are very important. <laughs> so yeah with both FOSDEM and uh, C3, I think that we want to see a larger presence for UbiPorts. And we're looking forward to the other conferences this year. Uh, UpuCon Europe is looking to be awesome. So I, I am personally very excited for that one. So we'll see everyone there. Um, you know, another ping one, any of us in the- Another one that's not completely set in stone yet is uh, Chemnitz Linux Days, which is where I think only me has been last year. Um, we're not sure if we're going there this year, but uh, that will be in May. I would ex I would actually really like to attend this one again, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> so if anyone's on site at any of those, ping us and you know, 
get your uh, Patreon rewards that are physical rewards, like handshakes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> because we do promise that, so you can have them. So, as uh, I was saying before, we have a bit of a special episode for you all today because, well, it's the beginning of 2019, and with 2018 over, it's time to go over our 2018 predictions that we made in episode 19 when this show was still called the Ubiports Community Update. But before we do that, I'd just like to thank everyone who is supporting us on Patreon, LibrePay, and PayPal. And to our sponsors, including DigitalOcean, Packet.net, and Smooze. You're all making it possible for us to, um, for one, talk to you every couple of weeks or months in some cases. And you're making it possible for us to make this mobile operating system. So thank you all to everyone who is supporting us. Yeah, it's 2019 live chat. <laughs> and let's continue to make Ubuntu Touch awesome this year. So, Ubiports Community Update 19, starting at about 26 minutes and 40 seconds, but who's counting? We all made our predictions for what was going to happen in 2018. And let's start by putting Marius on the spot. Well, mine is correct. We will raise Ubuntu Touch based on 1604 and it will be really, really good. It will happen early 2018. So Did it happen early in 2018? Well, depends what <laughs> early is. Early for <clears throat> for some people still is in the summer. It's still early. So, <laughs> but ignoring the early part, it will happen in 2018. I think it's pretty accurate. If we're <coughs> excuse me, if we're giving out points, I think you get half a point for that one. Half a point. Thank you. Oh, hello, Clive. And then, uh, then we have mine. I said, we will see more Holium ports and many features coming into Holium, like multi-boot of Holium operating systems. Wow. Um, that well, didn't happen at all. Well, semi-correct. We will see many more Holium ports. Yes. We saw more Holium ports, but we did not see any new features, and that was kind of the big part of the prediction. Right. And we didn't see any Ubuntu touch devices running Holium in the new ones. That either. Well. Nah. No. We have... We're getting there, but it's no. not there yet. Well, it depends. Running. <laughs> uh, yeah, Running. Okay. Yeah, no. It no, starts Unity no, 8. I'm not, I'm not giving myself any points for that one. It's okay, a zero. Not... That's a big old zero. Okay. Florian, I think yours was next. Uh, Florian said, We will be invited to talk with Linux Press like magazines oh you're muted there you go. yes it was just lagging around um well linux press like magazines um we did we did a little bit regarding that um when we look here on this list it's it's quite sophisticated uh linux user and developer um personally i don't read Rest these ones um but we were more on the on the shows like uh, Late Night Linux, uh, Linux Unplugged, and so on. I think that uh, Linux Press, like magazines, was a little bit um, a metaphor for being being on public media mentioned somewhere. So um, when I look here, that Jan was also on several podcasts, radio talks, um, Living Linux. A lot of things. Linux Action News, This Week's in Linux, Destination Linux, Softpedia, Foronix, Ubuntu Yotra Yerbas. What is this? That was good. That was a good pronunciation. <laughs> I was thinking I was going to have to do that, and I was going to completely butcher it. <laughs> um, yeah, including the conferences, of course. Um, the Linux Days in Chemnitz, Ubucon Europe, Chaos Communi Communication Congress, what we said now. Um, but still, I would say, um, yeah, we, we somehow fulfilled this this uh, forecast right um, it's not only press like magazines it's just um, yeah uh, 
people that uh, want to talk with us about uh, why we do new reports, uh, what we plan, what was the history, and um, but there is still a lot of uh, more that we could do, of course. Yeah. Um, because still a lot of people think that um, new reports or Ubuntu Touch itself is more or less dead or obsolete or whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, so um, it would be great when we use 2019 again to try to get more um, more attendance um, from bigger media or from bigger organizations. Yeah. Um, FOSTEM is maybe a good kickoff for that, actually, because on FOSTEM, if we, while we don't have a booth there, um, we could still um, get a lot of uh, people to talk with us and uh, we can leave our marketing material and this stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, um, we just have to tell everyone and uh, everybody that this project is not dead. This is a good mission. Um, and um, yeah, if you come across people that say the project is dead or Ubuntu Touch is not existing or it uh, has died, then you can tell them, okay, no, it's not. Yeah, I'm like just that. following up. Ubuntu so Touch.io. Yes, Ubuntu Touch.io. We need everybody to spread the news, continue to spread the news that we are still alive and rolling. Get stickers. Give up stickers. stickers. Put stickers everywhere so everyone can By see. the way, to put you on the spot, I do need more stickers. <laughs> I can set you some. Jan is hmm. the sticker master. I'm yes, the master man. of stickers. This, I'm the sticker man. <laughs> He's the stickiest of all. Do we do we still have it on the on the Patreon uh, yeah. stuff? Do everybody get stickers and such? Even, yeah. even though we are late with sending them out, I think uh, there haven't been any shipments within a month, but so they are still coming. If anybody is listening that doesn't know it, um, we are sending out stickers as a reward or a uh, present for donations that we receive on Patreon. So it would be a good a good moment to make a subscription now. But you have to select the the reward you. Yep. If you you can also select a different one. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Ubiports. Perfect. Exactly. So that's our press relation. We try to improve it. Uh, we have started it off, but uh, we still need to get more noticed. Well, by everyone. to be honest, I would say this is a point. I think we have got pretty good coverage this year. Yes, year. Florian gets a point. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I okay. love this game. So I think I'm next. Uh, I next. said we will get better compatibility with more standard Linux applications, uh, like, for example, Qt Quick Controls 2. Um, that kind of happened. So we now have support for Kirigami and Qt Quick Controls 2, which, is both, uh, which are both QML libraries. Um, and they do work on the phones now. Uh, but I would say I only get half a point because on the one hand, not that many apps use it yet. And uh, I also was talking about uh, li uh, no, uh, uh, Libertine. Uh, Libertine. <laughs> yeah, Libertine. Uh, and actually like uh, stuff, stuff like uh, actual desktop applications. Uh, so more than just... <laughs> Libhibertine. <laughs> Libhibertine, exactly. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, more than just support for the uh, for the interface toolkits, but actually ha having the applications. So I think we made a step in the in the right directions, but uh, but we still uh, need to push it over the edge. Yep. Oh, half point to John. Florian is leading. I made a small aside that we might be able to run actual Wayland apps with the new mirror, and we're not there yet. Well, well, we don't have the new mirror yet, so. Uh, that's probably the big block on this one. If you install devil, and then you install edge, and then you install extension, underscore edge, underscore mirror, uh, you can actually install a new mirror and have bail application. Mario, since 2019. It's yeah, oh, right, shit. <laughs> okay, Dalton, you get minus points. Uh, Marius' second prediction was that the foundation would get approved. That's a little awkward. Yeah. That we can't didn't really yet. do much about it. Uh, the government is just slow. That's legal stuff. So. Yep, so we've resubmitted our paperwork since then. 
um, with the corrections that they asked us to make. So now we're in another state of waiting. Mm -hmm. Maybe just two notes on that. We, we need to convince them that we are, um, how is it called? Not charitable, um, the English word for uh, public benefit. Public, yeah, that we are not a foundation that is really up to earning money or just hoarding money for some uh, some rich guy or something like this. They might, uh, because it's of, of tax reasons that we have uh, benefits like this. And um, But we really need to convince them that our mission is something that helps the public um, to, I don't know, get to greater mobile freedom and um, equality on the, on the mobile market, or I don't know. There's a lot of marketing behind, and yeah, they are just very, very strict. Yeah. Non profit. Really... Oh, thank you, Ellen. <laughs> it's so easy. As a non profit uh, foundation, in terms, in contrast to a profit foundation. Uh, and yeah. one thing we need to keep in mind also is that we are doing this as probably the first one to have a mobile operating system be fully backed by community, uh, like started for just phones. Like we have KDE, but that was started for a different reason back when it was started. Um, so we, are, yeah. we probably are the first one starting as a mobile. And mobile is so big these days that who understands? Like there's no one really understands the the open source community except people that's around it. Um, like others outside have a different. Uh, they don't understand open source as we do, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. But we're not giving in. We're pushing them hard, and uh, okay, they're not going to be pushed by us. But we are, we are poking them a little bit, and uh, we are confident it will still come through. We are registering in Germany. Yes, Germany. It is a Stiftung in Germany. And that's extremely hard in Germany because they are so correct. Yeah, Jan, you know this. Yeah, <laughs> they're s totally correct. In Austria, it would have been maybe easier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Here he goes know. again, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, um, this probably sounds uh, sounded a little more uh, dire than it is actually. So um, yeah. this is normal, and it's part of the process uh, to just have a couple of iterations with the government on um, on the founding documents. Um, it's still going to happen. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Not giving up yet. Yeah, Jan says three months again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shall we take some questions in discussion? Yeah, sure. let's do it. So we take these questions from our forum at forums.ubports.com. That is the first place that we take questions from. Although we do also answer from YouTube live chat and our Telegram supergroup, which is at ubports on Telegram. Our first question this week comes from Dom UBPKM. He says, UBPorts is moving to GitLab, right? Do you have a deadline or provisional timeline for that? So our move to GitLab is happening, yes. Um, as we decided a month or two after uh, Microsoft bought GitHub. Um, it's happening as it becomes possible. So. As we have the CI pipelines put in place, we are moving our packages over there. So right now, app mostly core apps are moving over because they can be built with Clickable using GitLab CI and deployed straight to the open store. And that's making a huge benefit for our core app maintainers because all they need to do is create a tag and boom, the release is out in the store and it'll be in the next image. So it's that easy for them now. Um, as for our Debian packaging in infrastructure, oh, it needs a little work. So yeah, this, when we, yeah, this is something we have been talking about for for a good while, I would say. Um, and 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 this is a good opportunity to do it now when we're moving to to GitLab, to to use some more serious tools. Um, the runs that we use now uh, are are mostly Bash scripts uh, and Bash scripts trying to maintain. Um, all the packages that we have now, um, it's really slow. Uh, it works really great, um, but it's just slow. Uh, so the idea is to move over to a more um, heavier or more low level uh, tools to make things faster. Um, and we are looking at uh, aptly um, as an alternative. 
Um, if Simon's watching, I'm sure he'll have several opinions on what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, Simon, I'm not going to use duck. It's way too It's way too <laughs> <advanced>. <laughs> I, I can't wrap my hand around the documentation, and when you don't have documentation, I'm not going to use you. Well, not that also, but it has a weird process of merging. Since we are doing everything in CTA, while Debian has a completely different process, it's a bit hard to integrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that'll be something that we'll have to be looking into this year, especially as we want to move to GitLab. Um, and that's kind of what's blocking it right now, is having that not in place yet. Well, our next question came from Rogier. Probably that's the name. What are your personal coolest achievements of 2018? And what are you looking forward to for 2019? And this is an addition for me. No, releasing Ubuntu Touch 16.04 does not count. Go. <laughs> um, Jan, why don't we start with you? Um... I had a lot of fun presenting UbiPods at several conferences, uh, as we, as I said before. Um, what was kind of a downer was that in the second half of the year, um, due to some personal reasons and some, some other stuff, I had to uh, cut back on some of my UbiPods activities. Um, but I, it really made me happy to um, to uh, see the the community step up uh, and take over the uh, the things I was responsible for, and um, also many many new contributors in that uh, in these areas. So um, that really made me happy. So thank you. Anything looking forward to for twenty nineteen? Um, keeping it up uh, and coming back full time, hopefully. Um, no, I, I, I think uh, we're doing pretty good right now. Um, and uh, it can, no, it can only get better from here. Sounds bad. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it, it will get better. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. You did, uh, it and, will and do it better. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Good work. We saved that one, guys. <laughs> so for me personally, um, I graduated. I have an associate's degree in software development now. Woo! Uh, that means I am officially, uh, I have a piece of paper that says I can do this. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I only have in uh, electronics. So that's fine. Go ahead. Electrical Not engineering. Salty. Not salty. <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed being interviewed on podcasts this year, um, being on Ask, the Ask Noah show, Late Night Linux, um, and Linux Unplugged. That was a lot of fun. I actually went um, when Ask Noah, the Ask Noah show did its um, get together over in Minnesota. That's not too far away from me, and I'm about halfway between there and where Simon lives. So he drove to me, and then I drove him there. And we had a great night of just talking about Linux. That was episode 100 of the Ask Noah show for anyone who wants to listen in there. He grilled me on why I think Ubuntu Touch is important and why I think we'll succeed. And that one was a lot of fun. And um, personally, since this was a personal question, um, I'm happy that I've begun reading a lot of books, actually. Um, taking it back to basics getting off the screen a lot. Um, I bought a Kobo Aura H2O Edition 2, the best name for a product ever, and have a lot of eBooks on it. And I spend a lot of time reading. I read um, People Wear, The Mythical Man Month, um, all the ones that are kind of essential if you're going to manage a software development team. Um, I just finished The Lean Startup, and I started on um, what, what was it called? Irresistible. Uh, the book about how we're all addicted to technology. And I can bring this back, trust me. Uh, that leads into my hope for 2019. So I have um, personally realized that I've started to become addicted to some online services again. Most, most um, egregiously 
YouTube. And until I started reading Irresistible, I realized the end. Ugh, I got stuck in it again. It got me. It got me good this time. Um, as I've been effect. finding that I have less and less time available for doing things, and I just can't find out why. Well, that's why. Because the online services that we all subscribe to and use are irresistible. They're addicting us all. So what I hope they're for... They're designed to be that way. They're designed to be that way. So what I hope for in 2019 is that Ubuntu Touch gets a review that says, you know, this is the best operating system I've ever used, but it's not as compelling as Android. Let me back that up <laughs> because it sounds bad. But that means that we have made something that is completely usable for, P for the reviewer. It makes them useful in their own life, but they aren't addicted to it. It is an operating system that you want to use, but that you don't have to use. That is my hope for 2019 for what we can be. Oh, that's an interesting take. Huh. Oh. <laughs> I've been thinking about this a lot. Very, very poetic. Well, thank you. I like, I like. Gloria. Marius, can you follow it up? Oh, oh, oh you're gonna, oh. you're gonna punt it. All right, Florian, <laughs> what do you got? Um, okay, so um, I can also leave Marius first, but um, yeah. Um, well, regarding Ubuntu Touch, um, what is the coolest thing actually? Mm, I think that I spoke to a ton of people that uh, either pinged me on Telegram or wrote me forum messages or wrote me emails, and I completely cannot keep up with how many contacts I made last year. Um, sometimes it's just a single question and people are okay with that. Sometimes people have a demand and I need to do something for them. It was very stressful sometimes. But in the end, I'm really happy that I could network so many people together, telling, okay, go to this channel, go to that person, this guy knows that, um, like a, a small relay of information. And uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty good at it also. Um, and so, yeah, while I don't recommend to everyone just ping me personally when you have a problem, I will also not ignore as much as possible people that ping me. Um, even it might take a little while until I come back. But since Telegram is storing everything very nicely for me and also, of course, forum and so on, I try really to come back to questions that um, I'm confronted with, let's say. <laughs> so um, I also like to appear on, on these Q&A shows whenever I can, um, because for me, even if it's a highly technological uh, topic that we have with, with our mobile operating system, it's always the people behind that really count and that matter is the user base, and if nobody would use it, it would not be any fun for us, uh, at least for, not for me. Yeah? So knowing that uh, we could increase the user base, maybe not by thousands of users, but by a few hundred uh, over the last one and a half years is already a reward for me. And also to see so much interest from users coming uh, directly asking questions, that is very OK. <laughs> Except that, Wayne, if you need really something, don't ping me now during the show. Yeah, <laughs> you can ping me later. He's he's exploiting it immediately. Thank you. Throw in shade. Um, and besides that, of course, um, I'm I somehow got finally uh, the last version of this old Telegram uh, app out into the store. It was lying around for months. I couldn't finish what I wanted. I'm really glad that we switch over to the new Telegram app soon because it was really no working with the old code base anymore. It was really making me personally frustrated to say, okay, do I have to support this now for ages? Hopefully not. Yeah. So getting rid of the old app is for me a personal achievement somehow. Yeah. Um, in non UbiPorts stuff, of course, my, my year was also very, very interesting because I changed my job. I got a new company. Everything is much more different than in the old one. Um, I'm working now as a, as a software developer, as a pure software developer, not so much customer context anymore, not so much project management. I'm really doing software only from eight to five or eight to, to six mostly. And um, I'm in an agile team. I met new people. I had to adopt to agile workflows. Sometimes it's really, really, um, let's say, completely different to what I'm used to. 
but I try to learn a lot from uh, how modern software companies work these days. I'm working for a company that makes testing software, so I also try to get a lot of experience that I can apply for Ubuntu Touch testing in the future and um, automated testing especially. So yeah, this was a cool achievement for this year. And then of course, last but not least, the birth of my son. And uh, he's a little sunshine and every day in the morning when I can uh, pick him up and cull a little bit and then get him ready for the day, I know that these, uh, this generation, they will have a completely different um, technology maybe when, when, they are, when they are getting big. And we are laying the ground here for maybe not having a usable full featured phone in a few months, but he's now seven months old when he, I don't know, turns 10 years, 12 years, um, then hopefully we have a huge ecosystem of uh, open uh, mobile operating systems and we could a little bit kick ass to uh, Google and to, to Apple with that. So um, yeah, he is a motivation for me to try to continue working on whatever I can find there that improves the things. I really have to cut back on doing too much. And I did already, for example, if people would see me not answering public forum posts anymore so much, because you have to reduce at a certain point. Eh? I think it's the same what Jan said before with having the time that you have um, spent in a wise way, let's say. Eh? Um, not just sitting 24 seven in front of the forum and waiting for new messages. In the beginning, that was really cool eh, to see how the people came. But then on the other hand, it's a forum for the community and even if I'm not answering every post, uh, then uh, somebody else will. There are a lot of knowledgeable people already outside. Uh, yeah, so I would say my year was very great, in both ways personally and also for Ubuntu Touch. And um, yeah, um, of course, 2019, here I come. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to say that I think, think your son will be really proud to see uh, you in a history books or not books but history making history <laughs> history ebooks yeah. <laughs> history ebooks or history in wikipedia and you can see that you are actually one of the fathers of Bantu -touch modern Bantu -touch. technology <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm, I'm, man I'm too old school, but you get what i mean <laughs> yeah florian stop making lib hybris <laughs> jokes in the chat <laughs> okay so yeah. it's me now then yeah so, so one of the things that that I did in or I'm proud of is I, I started learning more on psychological part of technology. Uh, I've been reading a lot of books about how how mental health and technology really goes together, um, and how 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 really, especially social media can can affect people, and how how bad it actually can be. Uh, such an article for for anyone that that uses these media, um, and especially teenagers, um, it can be be really bad. Um, and especially when you have bigger companies having pretty much full access to those people um, to to pretty much mind control them whenever they want uh, in some way or another, um, and how how all gets together with going around from from depression to anxiety. Um, it has been been really interesting um, going through um, a lot of these, mostly also because I we all struggle with these these things from from time to another. Some struggle more and some more or less, um, and it has been really interesting to see how they connect together with technology. Um, so that's one of the things that that I really really want to 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 also see in the. The newer 2019 to to get options out there to to make able to where you can disconnect yourself without without actually because people want a smartphone but today if you want a smartphone you also get all the the other stuff that you don't really want like tracking when whatnot um, but you don't really have an option to have a smartphone that's yours. Um, and and that's really what I want for 2019 um, to be able to decouple yourself without decoupling from the smart smartphone. You know, to bring this all together, both between yourself and Florian, um, irresistible. Which, if you haven't read it, you definitely should. Um, starts out with an anecdote. 
Um, Steve Jobs, on the introduction of the iPad, spent 90 minutes in front of a lie in front of a huge audience at the Apple keynote, talking about how the iPad was the best tool to uh, browse Facebook, take classes on iTunes, you listen to music, read books. But when Steve Jobs went home, his children did not own an iPad. The title of the chapter is Never Get High on Your Own Supply. And it's about how the makers of Silicon Valley and all this technology we use don't use it. Yeah, because they they see they are deep into it and, and they see what damage it can cause. And I, I think this this will grow more and more the more like automatic systems we have um, like big big networks trying to figure out what you like and what you should like and how you should like this and how you should go about doing that um and that, that that's scary it, it is um it's it, it's how it's how the world has become in 2018 and i hope to change that just a and little it really, bit it really doesn't have to be like that no it doesn't it and it it only gets worse if if we have more of these. Um, when we get self-driving cars, the car can uh, say no. You should not go to the store. You should go to this store because they have DRM with me. They have things you like. Yeah, yeah, they have things you like, and I know you like them. You don't. I know better than you. I will drive you there. And uh, I know it sounds crazy today, but ten years ago, talking about the stuff that we have today was also mind-blowing and crazy and we never thought it would be this bad like nope. it's really good but it's also really bad um just today and i know that we're running out of time here so um <laughs> live chat is hilarious um this is a good groove i think we're gonna keep with this for this episode um just today an article came out <laughs> what <laughs> Down with System D. <laughs> <laughs> On the private internet access blog about Google's patent that they just filed for a whole home sensor technology. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you read that too? Um, yeah, private it's... internet access is a sponsor of UB Ports, but this is not a sponsored mention, by the way, that I'm legally required to say that. <laughs> um, this technology is meant to put sensors in every room of your home. All of them. Yes, even that one. And they talk in the patent about how they can use vapor sensors to detect whether there's a meal cooking right now, or a microphone to detect when chairs are moving around and who's at the table and who's not, and use, your, use people's phones to give them notifications. Hey, you haven't been eating dinner with your family lately. Would you like to do that? You haven't taken a shit. Do it now. Not quite that far. But they but, are talking about sensors in the bathroom as well. Yeah. And it also has this technology called assertions, where if you're a parent, you set limits on your children for you know, screen time, which might not sound like a bad thing, but it detects that everywhere. It detects when people make promises to others and helpfully reminds them to make good on their promises. And all of these things sound good when they're described in this way by the Google engineers and the, um, the patent filing. There it is. Yeah. But the private internet access blog post finishes out with a pretty scary prediction of where it can all go. Um, by just... doing this to your kids, by having this in your home, you are showing them that nowhere is a private place that everywhere in your home is being listened to whatever they say and whatever they do will be reported on and by teaching kids that they then won't question when that happens in the wider world so i think that's something that we just need to watch out for and that <laughs> mars just shamelessly posted his blog in the supergroup uh, which also has similar articles to this that he's been writing lately, 
which I do envy him because I really want to get back into blogging. <laughs> um, so so I the see... thing is, what Dalton says now is, is extremely valuable because when we have it in your home, you can imagine how much control they have today with just your phone. And that's why I blog, this blog post that I wrote about, I, I de deconstruct how much information you, you get from just GPS locations and, and how much you can know about the person with just the GPS. Uh, I'm not talking about sensors and everything you have on your phone, just the GPS. They can know exactly what you are doing. And if you have this in your home, you are taking this to the next level. And I, I know we sound like nutheads sometimes, <laughs> but the thing is, when you know how technology work, you really understand how dangerous it can be. And, and that's the thing is, you see this a lot with people coming into the Android community and get to understand how things work. They see, oh, this is how it really is. And they are then moving over to a more private system. This happens so much when people actually don't know about it at first because they get to know technology and get to know under a hood how much actually can do. And that's why there are so many people voting for open source and that's because they, they know technology and I know the damage it can do. So we are not only talking because we are paranoid, we are talking because we actually <laughs> but know that helps, technology. that helps, by the way. It, it helps, <laughs> but but that being said, I'm not I'm not paranoid. I, 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 I do have a, a Google Watch on me, um, so I'm not 100% paranoid uh, in that way, but I take protections to turn off GPS and everything on it so I don't get the tracking all the time and I don't have a Google account on it. So uh, this is actually, we are getting, this is a, a project of mine to doing Asteroid OS, so that's why I bought it, but I haven't you know, got that questions yet. about that, but we're going to have to punt them until next time. And just because you're param paranoid, don't mean they're not after you. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Actually, you do give us a pretty good segue. We can finish off with that. Um, there was a question in the forum about Asteroid OS. Uh, to, um, because it's built on Qt, QML, and LibHybris. So, of course, does that mean that a good synergy with Ubuntu Touch could be possible? So to start with, um, our smartwatch and our phone OS are two very different technologies. Uh, they're built on some of the same technologies, but they're two very different things. Um, like running a traditional desktop app on your phone, it's kind of a pain. Running your phone apps on your watch will probably also be a pain. So a direct one-to-one -one port on the apps isn't entirely likely. But... Since Marius just talked about this, an app for communication between Asteroid OS and UT, Ubuntu Touch, would be very helpful. It already exists. And of course it does. It. <laughs> it is, uh, it isn't actually, I, I'm not sure if it's made by the person that actually made Asteroid OS, but it is on their repository. Uh, it's, it's very out of shape though, um, but it is there. At least okay. there is something to start with. So how I was going to finish this off was it would be a great um, opportunity for someone, for a contributor to both of our communities or just one of them to bring our communities together. And since it sounds like this already exists, you could help them improve it, bring us together and make, us, make Ubuntu Touch the best way to use your Asteroid OS watch. Um, Jan, I believe you had something to say on this, though, which is why I wanted to bring it up. Uh, yeah, if someone wants to help with this uh, and doesn't have an Asteroid OS device, um, I would be happy to send them uh, my Asteroid OS watch, which I have lying around right now, um, because a while ago I was actually planning to uh, to get my hands dirty with this one, but then I decided that it would take too much time. Uh, so if someone uh, has some references uh, that they actually uh, have experience with Bluetooth or energy um, or um, similar uh, skills that are required to do this, um, then they can just uh, message me and I'll get them my uh, watch. Yep. That was, that was the big reason for bringing this in. So to end off, um, because we are hitting up on the hour here, um, 
all of these technologies that we're talking about today, um, we're making them because we believe in a future that doesn't involve the current problems that we have in technology. I'm here on Ubuntu Touch because I repeatedly find that I'm becoming addicted to the online services that I use. Marius, as he just talked about, because he realizes the effects that it's had on mental health. So we all have, you know, big lofty goals for um, what we're doing here. Oh, thank you for that link. I will post that in live chat. No. And I'd just like to thank um, everyone for coming out today and listening. And I hope that you liked this episode of the Ubuntu Touch Q&A. It's a little bit different from um, <laughs> all the rest of them. Okay, okay, we can do it. <laughs> Marius, take it away. Everyone, everyone in the chat is saying one more question. Not in live chat, but in the chat that we have between us. So let's do it. <laughs> Do it. I'm not sure what you are aiming at, but do it. So Alan Griffiths posted in our forum about being interested in the progress updating to Mirror 1.x, which is, of course, not a surprise, given Alan Griffiths is the maintainer of Mirror for Canonical. First, how well is it working in development? Ooh, so th this has been, been really interesting. I've been working on this um, in the past two, three days. Um, and I already got Wayland buffers to, to render both the shim and EGL, which is hardware and software. Um, they both render pretty nicely. Uh, we still have some, some issues where if you launch Unity 8 with light DM on Qualcomm devices, it doesn't render them. That's um, very specific. <laughs> it's very specific and very weird. I don't understand at all, but, um, everything else seems to work pretty nicely. Wayland apps works. Um, they are much faster to start up, which is it's an interesting thing. Um, and the progress is going really, really nicely. And we are, we are hoping to merge this into to Edge pretty soon so people can try it on the Edge. Right. That was our original goal for OTA 8, was having this update to both Unity 8 and Mirror. Yep. Um, at the time, it was looking like Mirror 0 0.26, but now we're far enough along that maybe it'll be 1.1. Um, and we are still trying to keep the uh, faster release cycle going. So if it's not ready by the end of this release cycle, then we'll ship with the fixes that have been contributed by the community and by ourselves without the new Mirror. And also uh, one one thing I want to add here that Alan Griffin has talked about is um, the answer to migrating to Wayland in the first iteration. Uh, yep, the answer is no. Um, at this point, um, maybe if we are, if we are skipping next release, but if we are targeting next release, we definitely can't do that because Wayland needs a lot more testing for us, uh, to be able to, to ship that. Um, so and, uh, the question specifically is whether our technologies, including Qt Ubuntu, which ren which actually render the apps will be using Wayland instead of the well, mere protocols. No, it it will be if you drop Qt Ubuntu and mm -hmm. only use Qt Wayland. That's the that's exactly. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that's looking like a no so far. So far, but you know, you know, with software development is that sometimes things work and sometimes they work without you even knowing why they work or don't work. And that's the thing with software development that you don't really know when stuff will be ready. And um, especially with things like this, because it's so fiddly with these hybrid drivers and the, the, all the things. Yeah. The hybrids and the lib hybrids, that's called, <laughs> Florian has been talking about all, <laughs> all sessions. Lib hybertine, lib conferencing, lib history pedia. <laughs> lib. So so yeah, Live Harvest is a is a beast that uh, you cannot tame without some um, some hair loss. So <laughs> I think that's another one of those that uh, I'm works the expert for hair loss. You can talk with me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you have been working with Mir. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Live Harvest. I mean, okay. Yep. Um, 
Now if I do the outro, will you guys riot? Yes. Probably, but still, <laughs> take it away. But do it anyway. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being here for this interesting episode of the Ubuntu Touch Q&A. Uh, let us know if you liked it. It was a little bit different uh, than what we've done before. We might be finished here, but you can always get more of us. We are on every social network you could imagine, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google+, Mastodon, and Diaspora. You can also get a hold of us on Matrix. We are hash ubports at matrix.org, colon matrix.org, rather. We are at ubports on Telegram and hash ubports on Freenode IRC. We'll be back in about two weeks, normally, is our schedule. Um, it's been a long time since our last one, but we are going to continue doing this again. We won't make you wait that long again. Uh, be sure to leave a comment if you like what we're doing here. Um, I think this is where I'm supposed to say smash that like button. Yeah. And hit subscribe. <laughs> you can tell we have much energy in 2019. You will see next year the energy has dropped down. So. Oh man, look at all of that face palm. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, again so much for watching, and we will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.